In this video, we're going to learn about a variety of optical phenomena. So optical phenomena in the atmosphere are due to either the reflection, the refraction, or the dispersion, or the scattering and diffusion of rays of sunlight. So sometimes you'll see rainbows around the sun, all these phenomena that you might have wondered, how is this happening? And we're going to learn about that today. So why is the sky blue? Um, you can watch a video, there's lots of videos on YouTube about it, um, but basically the explanation is this. So the atmosphere is made up of gases and those gases include nitrogen. Nitrogen easily scatters the shorter wavelengths of visible white light. So that would be violet, blue, and green. But our eyes are much more sensitive to blue light. So that's the portion of the spectrum that we will perceive. And so that's why the sky appears blue. So you've probably um, heard about mirages in the desert. So people are you know, looking for water and they see water far away. Um, it's always in you know, cartoons and so on. Um, but you've probably observed mirages and maybe didn't think of them as mirages before. On a hot summer's day, if you're driving along pavement, in the future, you might see what appears to be wet ground. And that's actually a mirage. So mirages are produced by the refraction of light. So refraction is the bending of light when it passes into a layer of hotter air that's lying close to a heated ground surface. So cool air and hot air, even though they're both air, are still considered two different medians. And so that can create the illusion of a lake or wet pavement appearing where there isn't one. So sun dogs are pretty interesting. You often see them in the winter time because it does involve ice particles, but it can be seen other times of the year too, because up in the atmosphere, um, it is colder and there can be ice crystals. So what happens is in sun dogs, ice crystals are refracting sunlight. So this will happen on cold, clear, sunny mornings and evenings when the sun is close to the horizon. So it'll be either when it's rising or setting that you'll observe these types of phenomena. And they're more commonly seen farther north, um, but we can see them as well if we we're observant to the sun in you know, a cooler winter day. I've seen them quite often. The Aurora Borealis. Again, um, you can watch videos of these. They're so stunning. If you've ever had the opportunity to see the Aurora Borealis or the Aurora Australis in action, um, they're pretty um, amazing. And there's another picture of one. So often you'll see greens and yellows, but you can see reds and purples as well. So what happens, the northern lights or the aurora borealis are caused by the collision of charged particles directed by the Earth's magnetic field. So this mainly happens at the poles, but every so often, um, if there's a solar storm or some other phenomenon that causes the more charged particles from the sun to arrive near the Earth, we can actually observe um, auroras further south. So the colors are based on the different gases that are in the atmosphere. So it's mostly nitrogen and oxygen. So that's why they're mostly greens. And then rainbows. There's lots of videos about rainbows. One of the favorite ones that I have is Kermit singing about rainbows. If you have a chance, go take a look at it. So rainbows are formed when sunlight reflects and refracts within water droplets from rain, which act like tiny prisms, which separates the visible light into the separate colors. And there are three things that have to happen for you to see a rainbow's color. So this can help you actually look out for rainbows if there's been rain nearby. So the sun has to be shining now. So there has to have been moisture in the air, but now the sun has come out from behind a cloud the sun has to be behind you, so the source of light has to be behind you, and there has to be water in the air in front of you, so water drops in the air in front of you. So if you're looking for a rainbow after a rainstorm, don't look towards the direction of the sun. Put your, your back to the sun and look um, at the direction opposite the sun, and then you should be able, if there is a rainbow, be able to find it much easier. So this is what it looks like. So the white light's coming from the sun. It's being scattered into the individual colors and then they're being reflected a couple of times in the water droplet and then spread. 
So this isn't just happening once, all the water droplets are reflecting and refracting.